Okay, let's go ahead and solve for the variable v in this particular formula. Now this is a physics formula and v is right here. Okay, we have a v squared, but I want you to solve for v. In other words, I want you to rearrange the variables in this equation such that we have v is equal to something. Okay, and that's what we're going to be doing in this particular equation. It's very, very important. Uh, in mathematics and in science that you know how to solve or re, uh, rewrite formulas in terms of another variable. So we're going to be practicing that skill uh, with this particular problem. But I would say this problem is a little bit more uh, intermediate, a little bit more on the advanced side. So if you're confused about this, I'm going to walk through a basic problem and then I'm going to give you some uh, suggestions on where to practice this if this particular problem is a little bit too hard for you. But uh, again, this is good practice for a skill that you absolutely need to know in mathematics. But uh, we're going to get into this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. I have all the main courses like pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two. I'm going to be launching uh, pre-calculus here shortly. But I also have uh, many, many um, courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for, like, let's say the GED, SAT, uh, ACT, uh, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, ACCUPLACER, CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam like um, the CBEST or the Praxis or nursing entrance like the TEAS. There's so many exams out there that people have to take that have a considerable amount of math on it. So if you don't get to the math section on these exams, you don't get through the exam. So a lot of people out there are trying to relearn math. I can definitely help you out. Just go to my site and check out my full course catalog. If I don't have what you're studying for, just drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. Also do a lot with uh, independent learners like homeschoolers. I have a great homeschool learning system. And then obviously I help those of you who are just struggling in your math class. Now, one thing I can't do for you that you must do for yourself if you're serious about learning mathematics, that is the following. Okay, over decades of teaching mathematics, one thing is apparent to me, those students who take great math notes almost always do very, very well in math. And the reverse is true. Those students who've uh, talked themselves into this superpower that they have, like, I have a photographic memory, I do not need to take notes because I remember everything I see. Well, mm, they, they, that doesn't really uh, exist, at least in math. I know a lot of people think they have kind of a photographic memory. Maybe 0.00001% of the population has that ability, but most people do not. You need to write things down. Uh, when it comes to mathematics, it's just too much information, and it's easy to get distracted, okay? I remember uh, way back in the good old days before I was a serious student, how distracted I was. I'm sure I distracted a lot of students as well. You know, I did all the things that, you know, I'm sure you may or may not have done, like talking to your friends in class, checking out your uh, cell phone. Uh, of course, we didn't have those cell phones way back in the 1980s. I wish I had one, but uh, it's probably a good thing I didn't because I was already distracted enough but you're completely distracted, or there's so much distraction going on that uh, you're gonna have to force yourself to stay focused. Focus is the key to learning anything, and the one activity that will keep you focused is note-taking. So the better your notes are, that is a reflection on your uh, focus, okay? Better your notes, that means you are more focused. If you have a bunch of scribble scratch or inconsistent with your note-taking, then you're not focused, you're not gonna learn, okay? You can watch all these videos and do all these different things and whatnot. The bottom line is, if you're not taking notes, you're not learning, okay? So um, really take a hard look at your notes and start improving. Now, in the meantime, you need something to study from, so I offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so here is uh, our problem. I'd like you to solve for V. If you think you know how to do this, go ahead and pause the video uh, now and give it a, a whirl, okay, because I'm going to show you the solution here in just one second. So let's go ahead and show you the answer, okay? So this is the answer right there, okay? So V is equal to plus or minus square root, and you got all this right there. So that's the answer. Now, if you want to try this again, here's the answer. You want to write that down and try this again, then, you know, you can kind of do it that way to figure out what steps, obviously, we have to take for here to get to here. But let's do some uh, basic review here. So 
um, let's take a look at a real simple uh, physics uh, formula. So here we have force equals to maths, a uh, maths mask, excuse me, I can't even speak this morning. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. Now this formula is written in terms of F. In other words, it's an F equals. But if I said to rewrite this uh, formula in terms of A, or solve for A, in other words, I want you to rearrange it such, such that we have A is equal to whatever. Now, you should obviously be able to know how to uh, deal with this formula. If you don't know how to deal with this formula in terms of solving for A, okay, uh, then this video is going to be too advanced for you. Right? You want to go back and review that. I have a ton of videos on solving for specific variable, indicated variables in my uh, algebra playlist on my channel. Uh, better yet, you can jump into like my algebra course if you really want to learn this stuff. But uh, let's go ahead and review. Now, what do we have to kind of um, think to ourselves when we're solving for a particular variable in a formula or equation? So if I want to rewrite this thing in terms of uh, A, I'm going to treat A as a variable, okay? And then I'm going to think of F and M as kind of like numbers. So for example, let's let F, let's just think of it temporarily as some number. Let's call it 10, at least conceptually in our brain. And then we'll call M, uh, let's say 2, and then we have our A right here. So I'm going to only treat A um, as a variable. I'm going to treat the rest of the variables kind of like numbers. So how would I solve this equation, 10 is equal to 2A? Well, I would divide both sides of the equation by 2. So 10 divided by 2, which of course is 5, is equal to A. And that would be correct. So what we're going to do here is we're going to divide both sides of the equation. Let's do it over here on this side. Okay, we're going to solve for A or write this equation in terms of A. I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by M. So we have force divided by mass is equal to acceleration. And this would be the answer, but this is kind of the explanation that goes along with it. So uh, this is obviously a super basic, easy problem. And, uh, but you know, this principle is still the same. So here we're, we're going to be treating V as uh, the only variable. And we're going to kind of think of all these other numbers, all these other uh, M, G, H, and then of course, all these other, um, whatever we have here, everything else, we're going to treat it as a number. And that's kind of how um, we approach these uh, particular problems. Okay, when you're solving for an indicated variable in a uh, equation or formula, this skill is tremendously important. It's needed all the time in various uh, problem solving uh, topics. So you need to know how to do this. And this is a good little practice problem. Okay, so again, this is the answer. And now let's get to the steps. And I already kind of pre-wrote this uh, out. All right, so here is our original problem. We want to solve for V. So we have V right there. So what do we need to do first? Well, I want to first kind of, um, uh, I know that I'm going to be solving for this variable. And right now the variable is on the right-hand side of the equation. So I have ME is equal to all of this. So I'm just going to, uh, the left is equal to the right. I'm going to rewrite, uh, rewrite this equation. I'm just going to flip these sides here so the right is equal to the left. So uh, in algebra you can do this. Okay, so if you have x is equal to 7, it's the same thing as 7 is equal to x. All right, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm just flipping these sides because I know I want my V on the left-hand side, okay? So that's just kind of a first step that I like to take. It's not a required step, but it, for me, conceptually, I like to do that because I know the variable is going to end up on the left-hand side. At least typically, uh, we like to write things in that manner. Okay, now, so I got my I on uh, V. Now, before I can solve for V, let's just uh, solve for V squared. So again, all of this right here and all of this right here, I'm going to treat as numbers. So I have uh, 1 half MV squared plus MGH is equal to ME. Let's get rid of the MGH. We're going to move that over to the other side of the equation. So I'm going to subtract uh, MGH from both sides, just like this. And then I'll um, end up with ME minus MGH like so. Now, anytime you have a sum, anytime you have a sum or difference in algebra, it's a good idea to put grouping symbols around that. So I'm going to put parentheses around that to make it very explicit that I have ME minus MGH. Okay, now look, we're already much closer. Okay, I'm focused in on solving for V squared first, and then I know 
once I have V squared, let's say V squared was equal to 25, for example, um, and then I could just go ahead and obviously solve or solve for V by taking the square root of both sides of the equation, all right? So that's kind of what I'm going to be focused in on. So instead of solving for V right now, I'm just focused in on finding V squared. Okay, so now let's deal with uh, the things that are in front of V squared. So I have one half times M. So how can I deal with that? Well, let's deal with the one half right now. So I can get rid of the one half by multiplying the left hand side by two. So two times one half is one. But if I multiply this left hand side by two, I'm gonna to have to multiply the right hand side by two. And I can show that in this way right here. Okay, so if I could put brackets around the entire um, equation and multiply it by two, this indicates, or this is, this is stating that I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna multiply two by both sides of the equation. Now again, if you're a little confused by this, you might need to do some more basic problems, but let's just uh, continue on. So two times one half, uh, that's gonna be one. So I'm gonna be left with mv squared or one mv squared. And then two times this expression right here is two times me minus mgh. And now remember, I have these uh, uh, grouping symbols here. If I didn't have these grouping symbols, think about how this would look. This would look like two times me minus mgh, and students would not distribute this two to both of these terms, okay? So, uh, you know, a lot of little subtle details here that, you know, you're not being told what to do. You just got to know what to do. Like, and that's why, you know, practicing algebra is critically important to learn this stuff. Okay, so hopefully you're at, you know, uh, this step with me and you understand, you know, um, what I'm doing so far. And if you do understand, then that's excellent. Okay, because we're almost there. All right, so we have m times v squared is equal to this. So let's get to uh, this v squared um, by itself. So the way to do that, I need to get rid of this m. So the way to do, uh, uh, to get rid of that m is to, divide both, is to divide both sides of the equation by m. Okay, so I have m v squared. I'm gonna divide this side by m because m divided by m is going to be one. Okay, or 1v squared. So that's my goal. So it's going to be uh, 2 times this expression here divided by m. Okay, when I simplify that, now I have this. I have v squared is equal to 2 times me minus mgh divided by m. All right, so we're just about there. Again, I want to solve for v. I have v squared. So to solve for v, I need to take the square root of both sides. And uh, when you take the square root, assuming that we're dealing with uh, uh, real numbers here, you're going to end up with a positive and negative, just like this rule. Let's quickly review that. So if I, if I had v squared is equal to 25, if I take the square root of both sides, I get v is equal to not just 5, okay, it's both positive and negative 5. So this little positive negative is not a trivial detail. You want to put that into your solution, and that is that, okay? So this is what v is equal to. Now, if you got this right all by yourself without any assistance from me, then I must, in return, give you a happy face with a mohawk, an A+, plus, a 100%, and I think I'll give you three stars because this wasn't uh, the easiest problem. As a matter of fact, if you were in my algebra class, I'd say, you know what, just take the book, go home, I'll see you next year. I said, I don't know how you, know, how you got this right. You must be watching that guy on YouTube. But anyways, look, that's very good. Okay, if you're able to do this by yourself, that's excellent. Okay, that shows uh, shows me that you know you have a good, strong uh, foundation in solving equations, and you understand how to solve these literal equations, or deal with formulas, or solve for uh, solve for specific variables in equations and formulas. It's a very, very important skill. And uh, again, this problem wasn't the easiest. Okay, so if you're struggling, go back and you know review these type of real basic problems, and then build up to something like this. So, um, but anyways, this is not a trivial skill. Okay, you need to know how to solve for indicated variables. You know, uh, in formulas and equations, it comes up all the time, not only in math but in science as well. Especially courses like physics, which is an awesome course. And hopefully, you'll take physics if you. Um, uh, or kind of like thinking about what future courses you might take. I think physics is an awesome uh, course. Anyways, that's just me. All right, so if this video in some way helped you out, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. 
And if you're new to my YouTube channel, uh, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I've uh, been on YouTube for 10 plus years, uh, have a, a well over a thousand videos at this time. Uh, so tons of resources for you to continue to practice uh, on my channel. Excuse me, I have my videos broken up in various playlists from basic to more advanced mathematics. So it's a great resource for you, especially if you like my teaching style. But uh, my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.